Welcome, I finally got around to putting together this video. As you can see the printer has arrived. I was excited and didn't really think about how I was going to record the unboxing. At the editing stage I realized that I was missing a few useful shots. Moving on to the subject, the printer was packed quite well considering the capabilities of couriers, although it would not uh, survive being thrown over a fence. As you can see at the beginning we take out the manual, screen, accessory kit, power cord and spool holder. Important note for those who will order this printer. The frame and base of the printer are partially assembled. For this reason you have to be careful when removing them as they are wired together. Let's see what we have here. The accessory drawer. Y-axis belt is pretty tight. It was noticeable that the base plate was loose. I immediately looked into the accessory bag and pulled out the key. The base plate underneath has four pulleys, two of which have eccentric axles. This means that by turning them we can change the distance between the pulley and the guide. By pressing the base plate on the left side, where the rollers are on regular axles, I checked which rollers on the right rotate freely without contact with the guide. As a result, a slight adjustment was enough, about one eighth of a turn and the base plate held perfectly. Immediately you can put some accessories in the drawer and assemble the frame. The four screws included in the kit are used for this. Remember to seat the frame well in the cuts in the base. Now the screen holder. Here you just need to loosen three screws and set them horizontally so that they fit into the slots in the printer's frame. As you tighten the screws, the T-nuts will rotate enough to hold the screen firmly in place. Connect the plug to the screen and put the screen into the holder. Time for wiring. It is very simple because the cables are signed and it is hard to make a mistake. I started by connecting the extruder, a cable with a capital E, then the servo of the x-axis which is the horizontal one. The third smallest plug in this set is the x-axis limit switch. As we are in this area, you can mount the filament holder. In my opinion this is not the best place for the holder but in the future I will show you how to deal with it. Now quite a useful extruder knob. Pay attention to the orientation because the extruder axis is flattened on one side. A quick cable management and by the way I noticed that the x-axis also has some slack which I will correct in a moment. And a trick that I haven't seen anywhere which is nail clippers. When cutting zip ties they leave a better profiled end than when using a straight blade. We check how much the x-axis moves up and down. We also check whether the outer pulleys rotate without contact with the guide. As before, just turn the eccentric nut to one side or the other and check that for the play on the pulleys. Now just a z-axis servo connector. And now the most important thing is if you don't want to say goodbye to the printer at the very beginning. You need to check the power supply setting. The number that is currently visible on the red switch indicates the voltage at which the power supply is currently set. Change this by moving the red switch left or right. Rather it should already be set to your local voltage but you need to check it. It's time for leveling. I had to lower the base plate down because the screws were quite loose. On the knobs it is written in which direction you need to turn to raise or lower the bed so it should not be a problem for you even if it will be your first printer. Now we can start the printer and go to prepare in the main menu then select auto home. You select options by pressing the knob. 
And once the printer finish auto home, select move, then click on move Z and slowly set it to zero, observing the behavior of the header, because we do not want to engrave the surface of the bed with the nozzle. Then click on back and select the Z offset option. Now we take a piece of paper, put it under the nozzle and gently move it back and forth. Using the move Z option, lower the header further, this time even more carefully, until the nozzle touches the paper. Then move the nozzle upwards by one thousandths or five thousandths of a millimeter. It depends on how fast you lowered it. It's important that the paper can be easily moved. Then select disable stepper option, gently move the header to the left and the base plate backwards by hand. All the time you have to make sure that the nozzle doesn't start digging into the bed. It is best to move the header with one hand, hold the sheet under the nozzle with the other hand and check if the paper can still move freely. If the nozzle starts to touch the paper, you must stop and adjust the height of the bed with the knobs. When moving the header to a corner, it is a good idea to keep about 2 cm distance from both edges. We do the same by moving to each corner. It is worth repeating everything at least one more time to be sure that everything is even. Now move to the main menu, select leveling and wait until the printer completes the auto leveling process. Thanks to this even if the surface has some slight irregularities it will be taken into account when printing. This is the point at which I would like to have an additional shot for the extruder. At this stage you can put the filament on the holder and use 50 grams provided by Creality or immediately use something different. When using filament without a spool, you must check that the filament is not tangled. It is a good idea to start by cutting the end of the filament at an angle. To insert the filament, you need to squeeze the extruder arm and insert the filament into the hole. If the filament gets stuck as soon as it enters the hole, just let go of the extruder arm and push the filament further using the blue extruder knob. Fortunately, in this version the extruder arm is already made of metal so you don't have to worry about breaking it. Now, just insert the micro SD card with the gold contacts facing up. In the main menu, select print and one of the available models Boat or Rabbit. The Boat is just a classic Benchy. It prints at around 1 hour and 45 minutes. Pay close attention to the first layer of the print. Everything should stick to the surface. If you notice that the filament thread is dragging behind the nozzle, not sticking to the bed, you need to lower the nozzle. On the other hand, if the first layer looks translucent, it most likely means that the nozzle is too low. After the print is finished, you can lift the spring steel bed and bend it, so that the print jumps off by itself. One final note. This printer should meet the expectations of most people starting their adventure in the world of 3D printing. If you're just starting, don't get caught up in the wave of modifying the printer right after you buy it, because it doesn't always end well. It is better to buy equipment that meets most of the initial requirements and only then do more serious modifications when you become more experienced. In the next video, I will tell you about the problems you may encounter at the very beginning and what to do about them. Thank you for watching and hit the like and subscribe buttons.